Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Thursday, July 21st. Good day today. Actually, I was a little bit surprised by uh, the strong performance in the market today. They tried to knock it down. Yesterday in my video, I said there could be some turbulence, and that may still um, be the case as we move towards next week's Fed uh, meeting where the 75 basis point rate hike is currently the expectation but they might go a full percentage point 100 basis points today the ECB surprised everybody with a bigger than expected 50 basis point rate hike I, I sold I shorted the euro when it popped up on that um, rate hike and then it just like gave back everything uh, but now it seems to be creeping back up again, but uh, I'm staying short the euro for now um, Let's talk about the fiscal flows yesterday Like I said, we were going to see a big positive fiscal flow because yesterday was a Social Security payment And that's exactly what happened. We had a net 20 billion flow uh, It brings the deficit for July up to 141 billion now the cumulative deficit for May, June, and July, I think it's something like uh, 287 billion or 280 something billion. So we're like 42 billion from recovering all of the April tax drain. You know, I've been I've been mentioning this probably every single video since uh, April 18th or April 19th. Uh, because I've been, you know, trying to just pound home the idea or the reality that we had this huge <laughs> suction of, of, you know, money out of deposits uh, because of that tax drain and it just, it just upset everything, the economy, the market, and it takes time for that those funds to be spent back out by the government to rebuild balances you know um, financial balances of the non-government of us the economy and so now and it's been a, a very slow process this year I have to say because of the slowdown in, in the rate of fiscal flows generally you know the rate of spending has slowed dramatically from last compared to last year and that's under and also compared to the year before 2020 because you know we were having these stimulus one after another and it was just it was just pumping out the um, the the you know money and liquidity so now that things have slowed down it is you know it's just been taking a really long time so April May June July we're three months on from that April tax drain and we're still 42 billion from recovering the whole entire amount however we're getting close, and like I said last week, uh, I, I, you know, did a video actually. I think last Friday I said we are going to revisit the June, the mid-June highs, and we're not that far away right now. I think the Nasdaq today is uh, was like twelve thousand sixty or something like that, um, and I think the mid-June highs were like 12,350 so we're very close we're very close I said this was gonna happen based on the flows once again I will say if you understand these flows they drive everything and then to a, to a secondary degree you gotta look at bank credit because when these flows start to subside when they when they slow down uh, then it necessarily the economy starts to access or tap into credit because it, it wants to sustain a level of um, consumption and investment. You know, it's, it, it fights. The economy fights to stay alive. The economy fights to stay uh, in expansion, you know. Businesses fight to stay in expansion. We don't just, you know, when things don't we'll slow down, people don't just say, okay, that's it, I'm shutting my business down. No, you know, the first uh, response is it fights to stay in business. It fights to thrive. It fights to maintain. 
And so when those fiscal flows contract, you necessarily see an increase in uh, credit and I mean, on, on the flip side of that, and I know a lot of you have, have raised this point with me before, that puts the non-government us into deeper, you know, debt. And I understand that. But I have said many times that right now, the debt service burden, in other words, the, the, the burden, the difficulty of servicing that debt every month as a, as a percentage of disposable income is still relatively low by any historical comparison. All right, so as long as that is the case, it could continue to expand. Now, the impediment on the ability for banks to lend more of course, there's always capital. That is the, the real and the ultimate constraint on the, an ability of a bank to lend, how much capital it has. But the banks are all well capitalized. The other constraint is this issue with, you know, record amounts of reserves in the system. Now, reserves are a factor in calculating leverage ratios and banks have to been, be within certain parameters based on what the Fed tells them. And as, you know, <laughs> these, re these reserves keep piling up, I mean, I, I say this also almost every video, that the Fed had to literally create a special facility just so the banks could, like, siphon off, could push those reserves off into the reverse repo facility because otherwise they could have been in violation of the Fed's own regulatory mandates. It's crazy, man. So a lot of people, again, they're all, you know, all worried about QT. I mean, we need QT. And the Fed is doing nothing. I mean, it's like, I just looked at the Fed's balance sheet today. I mean, it's like hardly down at all compared to where it was. As a matter of fact, it, it was up again in the last week. They bought something like, uh, I think they bought like uh, 16 or 20 billion worth of MBM, mortgage-backed securities, the treasuries were down, but the overall, the Fed's balance sheet went up. So there's really no QT going on, and we need that. We need that really now, because now that the fiscal flows are, and, and I said this yesterday, I mean, there, there is a very evident trend of the daily flows going down. Very, I mean, it, I graphed it and it's just like, it's really going down. So we need that bank credit as an offset. And, and it's just, I mean, the Fed's got to get going. It's got to get going with this QT. And again, I, I'm excited. I want the QT. Everyone else out there is like, oh my God, QT, that's a tightening. That's taking away the punch bowl. That's a contraction of liquidity. You know, what it is, is relief for the banks, which, you know, they're dying to lend more. I mean, uh, credit demand is very high right now, very high. And uh, the banks, you know, you could just see by their behavior, you know, the, the record again in the reverse repos, uh, 2.5 something trillion in there. I mean, it's just like the Fed's got to get going. It's got to get going. So far this month, um, I think we're due, we got like 360 billion of net, not net, 360 billion of leading spending flows. That's down about 55 billion from where we were at this time last month. Okay, so it looks like July we'll see leading spending flows maybe just barely above 500 billion maybe like 520 billion and you know that's decent i'm not going to knock that but that would be the weakest monthly leading spending flow since january all right not good um so yeah, that's another reason why we need to see bank credit. Look, I, I still, I still think that um, the market leans positive right now. You have to buy the dips. We will take out those mid-June highs. Next month, 
like I've been saying, next month should be a pretty good month for risk assets. That's stocks, uh, gold, commodities, etc. That's because we're going to get that $45 billion quarterly interest payment. Uh, and so we will, <laughs> by next month, by mid-month, maybe earlier, we will finally have recovered all of the April tax drain and then some. In other words, the, the pool will have been refilled to where it was on, you know, what, April 17th, or what, what was that, April 18th was a Monday, so it was like on April 15th, and a little bit more will have been added, so that's good. Uh, the only thing we have to be cautious about or, you know, we have to look forward at the September quarterly corporate tax payment. But we got plenty of time to talk about that. A lot of things could happen in between now and then, but I'm specifically just talking here about the fiscal flows, which, again, is the thing that I concentrate on because that drives everything. What else? Gold rebounded today. I think we could now start to see some recovery in gold prices. Uh, now that, again, and again, gold is responsive to these flows as well. There's some lag time. Uh, we, we definitely have seen a lot of speculative uh, liquidation in gold. I mean, if you look at what's going on with the, uh, and I check this every week with the CFTC's Commitment of Traders report, I mean, there's been huge, and I think I talked about this a couple of times, there's been big, long liquidation by, by large speculative funds and also small speculators uh, of gold. And on the flip side of that, we have seen producers and swap dealers, uh, primarily the big Wall Street banks, they've been covering shorts, covering shorts, covering shorts. I mean, a very aggressive kind of bullish posture for them because they're basically almost always short uh, gold producers for sure because, you know, they, uh, they have the physical. Uh, but they've been very aggressive on the short covering as the price goes down. I mean, if you're patient, and we may finally start to be getting into a rally mode now on both gold and silver as these fiscal flows start to come back and we replenish that drain that happened in April. All this is kind of very, uh, it's not hard to understand. In a way, it's very scientific because it's all about, you know, it, it's all about this, this liquidity coming in and going out. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's all driven by government spending. And then, like I said, secondarily, uh, how the banking system reacts to that or how, how the banking system is there as kind of a, um, a secondary source of, of money, if you want to call it credit, what we call money credit, uh, as these flows come in and out. I mean, we saw actually the exact opposite of what I'm talking about when we had massive fiscal stimulus due to COVID, that lending collapsed. I mean, we had a dramatic shrinkage of credit creation because all this money that was getting pumped in as a result of the fiscal stimulus. You know, people getting checks every week, every month. Uh, the PPP loans, all this other stuff, which was basically free money, that was used to pay down debt. So we saw a big contraction. There wasn't a need, there wasn't a necessity of the non-government to access credit because you were just getting checks from the government. But now it's the reverse, that shrinking. So like I said, I mean, the economy, you know, it fights to survive and it goes to the next, uh, you know, resource, which is bank credit. And it's good for the banks. I mean, while it lasts, I mean, it means more profit for the banks, not to mention the fact that as the Fed raises interest rates, what happens? It has to pay the banks more money on those reserve balances so they get free money not us unfortunately but the banks do so if you want to kind of take advantage of that if you're not a bank which i guess most of us are not buy the bank stocks load up on the bank stocks 
at least that's a proxy, you know, you'll tap into that phenomenon of what's going on that the Fed has to just dole out money to the banks. Take advantage of that. All right, you learn stuff here. All right, everybody, that's it for today. See you tomorrow. Bye.